This is Abnormal Entertainment. I am a real American. Fight for the rights of every man. I am a real American. Fight for what's right. Fight for your life. You're listening to the No Cry Zone, a progressive political podcast on the Abnormal Entertainment Network. And welcome to the No Cry Zone. John's back from Hi, Maine. I'm back. He's from Bahaba. Bahaba. In Maine. There. Here's what I learned in Maine. Uh, I love lobster. Oh, I mean, I learned that before. I've known that for a long time. The Jew that loves lobster and bacon. All right. Anyway, so <laughs> sorry, Rabbi. Actually, my Rabbi doesn't mind. You're like um, you're like alt Jew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna bring that up, so I'm gonna steal that. Anyway, so uh, I realized that um, because when you go and you order a lobster dinner, they bring you out the whole lobster and you crack it open and go through that whole process. Yeah. Or your only other option is to order, and every restaurant has the same thing on the menu: lazy man's lobster. They all call it lazy man's lobster, where they've done all the work for you, and, and it seems so negative. Like you know, you don't want to be the the, guy. the out of towner yeah. that kind of the lazy man's lobster. So you, you the guy? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, but I, I will be from now on. I'd be the guy. But I will be from now on. Yeah. Because I ordered the lobster. Dinner. Oh yes. Well, I'll just have a crack at this, and then <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. You, you know, your reward ratio. There was uh, bodily fluids and. Uh, uh, oh yeah, you get the whole thing. R- d- I- ill-colored humors. I-, I didn't know what was coming. Colored <laughs> humors. I didn't know what was coming out of that thing. I didn't. I eventually, I had to call. It, do I eat this? Is this the part I eat? I don't know. That's horrible. Yeah. So you just like you know what? Just I'm full, on, I'm full on. If I'm touristing, I'm touristing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna know. Yeah. It's not like you're right. hiding anything. Right. Right. Hey, a waiter. <laughs> I like the the lobster dinner. I, mean, I can't even do yeah, it. You're, you're, you're working on the docks of London there. <laughs> I'm fishing chips, hey, Gump. <laughs> no, wrong wrong vacation. Right. Oh, um, lobster Aya. Oh, here it is, sir. Yeah, you're a local. <laughs> sure. It's Aya. That's the dollar said. Very good. Sometimes anyway. dead is better. Aya. <laughs> so yes, good to be back. Well, so yeah. So you hide. You saw. Did you see any historical things? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know historical per se, as much as, uh... Scenic? Scenic, yes. Exactly. Beautiful. It's, it's more of a scenic vacation than historical. See, I would only want to visit fictional things. My murder, she wrote, fascination would mean I'd want to find out where they, they shot the Cabot Cove stuff. Hmm. Which is probably some little town called not Cabot Cove. Right. They fool me. Right. I it's want per- to go to Stephen King's house. Right. That's Just a, stalk him for a minute. Portland? I think it's in Portland. Or is that Banger? That's in Banger. Oh, okay. Banger! Banger! I leave in Noah! Down the street from oh, yeah. Derry, I, uh. right. Now you're getting it. We, we, so, no, no. So, actually, we're not. No, <laughs> not even close. I have the same main accent that they do on Murder, She Wrote, which is not a main accent. <laughs> right. It's the, whoever was in casting that day. Right. Can someone sound funny? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You'll do. You. <laughs> Well, tell us about the flavor of things. Or do they seem as upset as the people in Howell or, or oh, good, in, good. in Charlottesburg? Or? Way to make it relevant, right? Yeah, yeah. nice job. Bring what, was, it around. what was the flavor? Well, while we were there, of course, the the, the first day we arrived, uh, the Charlottesville incident happened. Uh, and Bill. then, uh, then of course, uh, the... Uh, President uh, made his remarks on Monday, in which he was forced, like a teenager, having to apologize for TPing somebody's house. Came out and made the remarks where he explicitly called out the Klan and the neo Nazis. And then Tuesday, it's like he was back with his buddies again. You can't hold me down. <laughs> you know, right? Well, I didn't mean it. He did kind of get back with his buddies. I mean, he was doing all right. that infrastructure stuff, so he must have kind of yeah. got together with his buddies. Just like so that. Tuesday night. When, like, that outrage had poured forth from people that were so upset by his comments, um, there was a rally in Bar Harbor, and I think it was by one of the Indivisible groups. Mm. And they actually put banners all over, like, the gazebo down there. And there was, I mean, there was a couple hundred people, uh, you know, that were there. So that was kind of cool. There were speakers. It was very calm. It was very polite, and you know, but it was very, 
very uh, indignant mm. that this is our president. Yeah, uh, I think I think there's a lot of that. I think that the the Trump the Trumpeteers are louder though. There's less of them and they're louder. Hmm. So because we saw like the Phoenix rally yesterday, oh, God. and uh, uh, you know, did, did you see the pictures from the other side of the room? Where oh, you mean the part where they had blocked off? The, the, so oh. there's the there's the big rally room, right? Where you see he's on the stage and they're taking the picture, forced perspective over the crowd of people, okay. Okay. and then they turn the camera around right. and ghost town, right? For the right. rest of it. Because <laughs> um, I have friends in Arizona, uh, I lived there for a long time, and you know they were protesting out front. Uh, they saw that picture that the Trump uh, the Trumpeteers were sending around of the filled streets, ready for the president, and. It only took one eagle-eyed individual to realize that's not Phoenix, that's Cleveland, mm-hmm. and that's the Cavaliers Parade. Yeah, <laughs> so that, that was that was going around. Did you see the ads for actors? Yes, yes, yes. yep. Uh, yeah. I had a friend who answered that ad. Right. Was he the guy that was in back, the African American gentleman wearing the shirt that said, "Trump and Pence are not racist"? That's Black Mike. Oh, Black Mike. Uh, there's a you can read up on Black Mike. Oh, Black Mike okay. likes oh. to go to things and be black. Yep, <laughs> it's really his thing. Get paid to get be black. Yes, too. yes. But yep. I mean, that's his thing. It's and more power to him because mm-hmm. he's the only one that got some money out of Trump. He actually paid. Yeah, really. The contractor. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's something. <laughs> it goes to show you how important that was to Trump. I mean, right. yeah. uh, he made sure that that guy got paid and he would keep coming back. What you I know? thought was great about the rally was when he uh, explicitly told the crowd that uh, you know he tried to turn them on the reporters the press in general, and CNN specifically, and saying how CNN had cut out of the feed, and people all saw that as they were watching CNN, which had not cut, cut out, out of the, of the feed. feed. So as he's, they're watching it on CNN, him saying, CNN has cut out of the feed. And people watching CNN are like, uh, no, no he hasn't. But the people there didn't know that. No, of course, that's the point. So, you know, you, you, play, you play to the people in front of you, it's the same tactic that, the, that he used during the... the, the uh, the campaign. That's for the campaign. And it's just, just, it's just. It's meh. sad. You should have this period where you have a president instead of a campaigning shill. I mean, that's really what he's still doing. He's out, he's yeah, still out pandering no. to the people to get their vote in four years. And you should, he knows you should he have a period. It. Well, he's, all, yes, that is true. He is doing that. I also think he's uh, laying some groundwork, I thought. For him talking about the wall and how he'd be ready to shut the government down to pay for the wall, the one that Mexico is supposed to pay for. But that's all been conveniently forgotten now. That, well, yeah. not no one has. And, it, it, it's been remembered by a massive amount of people, just not the people he was talking to. Right none now. of his supporters are him. Right. But uh, there's no, I have decided there's no talking to a Trump supporter. Anymore. Oh, no. It no. Just, it's, it's pointless. Not the people Absolutely. that are still hardcore 100 percenters. Right. I mean, there's people that I think are. You know, that are of uh, the opinion of, yeah, he's an ass clown, but I'm still hoping he can get something done. I think they're wrong, but I think at least there's an acknowledgement of some reality there that maybe... I think there's a bunch of people that just won't admit they're wrong ever, but right. they know it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no, there's, right. there's a lot yeah. of that, too. You're right. right. There's the go-down swinging guys that know full well I'm fighting for no cause. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it, it is so... Uh, the whole fake news charge phenomena that he has so effectively utilized I mean just cynically but effectively utilized mm-hmm. and it so plays to this group exactly what you were saying in that when people cannot admit that they were wrong in other words they have they had an opinion they had a point of view and even though all of these counterfacts are coming at them that say your point of view is incorrect <laughs> um, they don't they're not altering. They're not budging. They're not. Right. They're and, not doing anything. And sometimes it's even in their own words. They're kind of contradicting themselves, or you still can't get them to turn over. That's a. It's one of those things where the, I think it's a human psyche issue. Is that person has got to do it on his own. Cognitive they're, they're, business. Yeah. There is no outside force that will ever affect them. No. In a way that they will show. Humans can discount other humans so easily. Though. Yeah. All liberals are stupid. They're they're ruining the world, and they don't even know it. And the the, right. the point is, see, the, this has gone beyond. Um, they think they're right. Mm-hmm. Now this has gone to a point of where they're saving people. This ideology is the only. Right. They're the only ones. It's basic Scientology. 
Mm-hmm. You know, huh. This ideology is the only thing that can save us, man. You gotta listen to Trump. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell you, you stupid liberals, we're gonna do it despite you. You know mm-hmm. that makes sense. So yeah. this, yeah, this is Scientology. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that that's that's probably the first theory that I've heard that it's beginning to make some sense about these people that it is a it is a religious like. Mm-hmm. Experience well, and, for them. You have to double like like we went to. There's the the example of uh, and I never remember her name. The UFO cultist in the fifties, who said on December twenty first, nineteen fifty four, we're going to be taken up and the Earth is going to be destroyed because we're the we know these aliens. We've been working for them. Day comes and goes. You'd think on December twenty second, all her followers would leave, but they don't. They double down on it. They invested so much in that worldview that they had to think, oh. Well, our faith kept Earth alive. Right. Yeah. So they, you know. yeah, well, they, <laughs> yeah. But let's face it; every religion, pretty much, yes. has this story at one time. The timeline may be different, right? But the the, the basic storyline. The is devotion not. to a person, a yeah. single individual. That's right. that's cult. That's cult. And this is a cult. It's a cult. It's Scientology. It's the same. It's using the same precepts as Scientology too. You mm-hmm. do. You're passing tests, right? Of faith, to Trump. Yeah. yeah, or, or yep. Yeah. And you know, you you ended last week with uh, would they be willing the Trump administration to do the same thing as a Holocaust or to to kill that many people? And my answer to you was um, yes. Any any um, part of that group, if they thought that they could number one get away with it, number two um, they were dissidents, they would do it. They would push the button. I, I wanted to kind of add to it is like just now that you're saying cults. I mean, really, any cult, mm-hmm. any type of thing where somebody gives up their their whole being to that ideology, you're going to have those fanatics that right. can, you know, turn off logic for that false premise and push the button and kill millions. You know what you I know? think? I think you guys are familiar with the Maslow hierarchy. Yes. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, Trump filled those basic needs. So now he's got these people that are indebted to him. Yeah. The safety, security, uh, no one listens to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Those needs right there for the, for the, you know, the white guy who felt disaffected because his president no longer was white. Uh, he filled a, filled a need. That's why Hillary Clinton didn't fill that need. She's a woman. I don't care what people say. There's, that's a big problem. Well, there's only one need a woman can fill. I think we all know that. Eggs? (laughs) Breakfast? That's, 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 that's I was, all I asked for. I was trying to channel the Trump uh, support. Oh, uh, gosh. So. Those, no. You don't use women for that. No. <laughs> no. You use hookers. There's a difference. Those oh, rounds. wow. They breed those in farms. They're, right. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, speaking of hookers and peeing on them, um, the, the, the dossier is coming back. Well, the yes, uh, uh, Mr. Steele. Remington Steele, whatever is his he, name is. Is he coming? Well, didn't he testify yesterday? I think the he Senate uh, Intelligence Committee. Where were you? I thought. I, yeah. I'm not, actually, I'm vacation. I'm not even supposed. Were to you be in Maine? No, I'm, I'm like three miles up the road in my camper. <laughs> okay. You vacation three miles away from your home? Uh, it, you have to do that when you have babies. I mean, it's, quit it's breeding. A, it's a small price to pay. No, you can no, no, no. You can go places. <laughs> no, you can. Have those children raised by wolves. Okay. It works. We'll put them out in the out in the pack. I mean, okay. I'm taking like last week. I thought it was you and I. We had this going on. I didn't know you were this needy. Because <laughs> we were chanting, "Jews will not replace us." Well, you were right. I, well, I, I, we I, just yeah, we yeah. took a, we took this yeah. show. Away. I, I even I, sang I, the theme song. I heard because I didn't know how yeah. to. Right. <laughs> I, I, I heard you heard what I what I yes I was listening. I, listen. I have a seventeen hour drive, so I'm like, oh, I wonder well, what what the boys did. I feel like falling asleep and killing my family. Let me put on, <laughs> me put on the no crime zone. And I literally laughed out loud when it started with you singing. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was perfect. Rob didn't know I didn't know it. He's like, you don't have to sing it. Like, no, I do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> it was very nice. Where are we all done? Very well, well, we tried to you know you know. Assimilate you we, being here, right? Well, yeah. There's only so much. <laughs> Jews will not replace us. <laughs> God. So um, I just don't get that chance. Are they, John? Are they close? Is this a secret <laughs> plot that you know about? All Jew, not in the know. <laughs> <laughs> They're not giving the secret. Hold to on, let me put down this lobster and bacon and all. <laughs> I'll get to you right now. So. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I think that whole notion of <laughs> look, 
this is nothing new about blaming the Jews or any other group, Your mm-hmm. national bankers. you know, for whatever ails you. I just don't get the chant, though. I mean, yeah. replace you for what? At Applebee's? Well, no, <laughs> right. no one wants that job. Right? Wait, where did that guy get caught fired from? King well, Dog but it, well, look, it, the the Tiki Torch Brigade that uh, you know was chanting this. Yeah, that, the, the, those a lot of those guys don't work at Applebee's. A lot of them a go to college or have been to college. Uh, the, there's the one guy that got fired from the hot dog. Right, the tofu hot. That's whatever right. He's yeah, say, yeah, I forgot about it. You're right, but. Uh, you know, it's. I think it's just the notion of it's just a convenient scapegoat. Yeah. It, without and, and look, why why would there be any rational reason for that when there's no rational reason for anything else they say or do? It's, there's a, there's a rational reason, and like like you say, you know, Hitler never thought he was a bad guy. Right. Oh no. You know, there's, there, there's, there's, we he was a good guy. We have the power to mind. rationalize anything. Um, but. How do you get this? Is the one I, I that, that the Jews can't replace? I well, can't get around. It, and the symbology, the sy- symbology of the flags. Yeah. You, you pick two of the biggest historical losers in history, and you throw your might behind their emblem. But here's why. So this connects. These connect. Okay. Uh, at least with the Nazi flag. So if if you think Jews are going to replace you, that means you likely. Uh, do subscribe to the theory that there's a you know a worldwide Jewish conspiracy that controls the banks and controls the media, and all you have to do is look and see you know how many Jews are in the entertainment industry. See, they control the media. And you're like, uh, wait, but I believe in the Hollywood one. You know, well, Hollywood was started by you know yeah. by Jews. There's no doubt about it. And prevo- I'm not saying there's no Jews in Hollywood. Tanya L. B. Mayer. Okay, was right. I, well, all I'm saying is. Awesome. Is that the notion of that there's a conspiracy, that there's some secret cabal? That's a favorite word. Uh, that 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 look, this is that the Jews uh, through the Rothschild family. I mean, if you want to get specific about it, there are some very specific. Let's get specific. Yeah, there's there some the very specific theories. Let's let's learn our folks. Okay, some, some, some so stuff. that the Rothschild family for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, hundreds of years has been the banker of choice for the elites, the Illuminati, and others, and that they have been the ones that provided the financial backing, mm-hmm. that have allowed these elites to control the populations all right, through various means. Now, if you, you can go leftist weirdo on this, and you get the Lyndon LaRouche, if you remember him, mm-hmm. and he tied this whole thing in with the Queen of England. And that they were in the drug trade, and yeah, there was a whole. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then, but if you want to go to the right, then it's and then you've got this whole group that that the Jews control uh, the financial industry. So Goldman Sachs. I mean, it's right there in the name, Goldman. Hello, and oh, yeah. <laughs> so that the if the Jews control the financial industry, in their mind, and. The, the financial industry, in other words, Wall Street predominates over uh, dominates over Main Street, which unfortunately it does. Uh, it's easy to then say, thus the Jews are they're secretly in charge. It's a freaking they, anagram, dude. They're the ones that are depriving these white males. They feel sacks of gold, okay, comma and, man, right. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> you figured it out. I did it. Wait, there's a red dot on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, we won't make our hundredth episode. You will. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then of course, if you really want to dig into it, then you, you you've got the groups that are like, oh, uh, that the the blacks are the Jews' muscle. That the that the Jews oh. use the blacks. Uh, the blacks. Oh my God! I apologize. Yeah, you did. That, that, you got to get lingo. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Right, right. But that the You're Jews use people of color. <laughs> uh, they either either directly or indirectly to keep a state of anarchy and 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 dismay, and that through that they are then able to impose their financial will. So oh. they're, they're pulling the strings. Who are the Jews replacing? I'm still, I'm still working on yeah, that. I, 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 I don't have an answer. For me, because I don't expect you to have all the answers. You're an old Jew. I'm an old Jew. So. You're a dreidel truther, <laughs> which is just the most horrible thing ever. 
I am, aren't I? You are. Yeah. Dreidel truth. Sorry, history sucks. What can I tell you? <laughs> yeah, you're far too. You're far too. You know, invested in facts <laughs> right now. I'm, I'm, I came up with Dreidel truth or It is very nice. I'm gonna. I, I both. I, I can't wait to pass on to my alt right rabbi. <laughs> the the, the alt Jew. Or no, no. Excuse me. Not my alt right. Yeah. Wow. That is the wow. Yeah. No. My alt Jew. My alt Jew rabbi. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the notion of dreidel truther. He, he will love that. Yeah. This, there needs to be something written about that dreidel truth thing. And, uh, yeah. so, so, anyway, so this, these conspiracy theories that it, it's so easy to for people to subscribe to because, A, like any conspiracy theory, any conspiracy theory, whether it's the Kennedy assassination or anything else, uh, it, 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 it replaces, it fills that need. You talk, right. you know, it fills those needs. I don't have to any longer really think about why my life is not where I want it to be. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. Right. It's forces beyond my control. This is the equivalent of telling kids that thunder is God bowling. Well, and... <laughs> no, well, all right then. I don't need to learn now. <laughs> and it's, it's also a, a hindrance to aspiration. Oh, yeah. As well, you know, right. I mean, even if you, right. you do take that on yourself, my life sucks... At some point or another, in that guy's brain, he's going to say, "Well, what's the use?" I mean, that's that's what I see in that, and, and that, and that I, I feel is you know that people laugh about it, and that people go too far about it. Well, see those guys. What happens is really nobody investigates. Those guys, uh, when they say that the, 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 they shouldn't have no aspirations, that they're not going to do anything for me. That's where they get wrapped up in the organization itself. Right. And they become the organization becomes their life. And yeah. That's and so. Yeah. Right. And and. That's how you whole, institutionalize hate. I mean, I would think that you could say all of the United States is somewhat of an advertising scheme for everything. I mean, every, every group, every product you buy, it's some type of a lie to get you to do something that you weren't going to do ten minutes ago. My dad says I'm a walking advertisement for birth control, so I get it. <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Which is why I think the I think fake news takes off so well. You know, I, I yeah. read Steve Jobs' uh, How to Sell to a Skeptic. Um, and that was basically what he, he, he was saying was, throughout time, that's what we've done, is we've created a population of skeptics, because everything out of everybody's mouth is somewhat untrue. You know, because it's coming from an ad guy. It's coming from a guy who wants to gain market share. It's coming from a guy who doesn't want you to know what he's doing over here. You know, he's just, there's so many different reasons. And that's why I, I think that, you know, the cabal theory is a little far-fetched, but I do know in that industry, if you were CEO of Goldman Sachs and you got away with it, you your, your partner company to... Lloyd box, Blank fine? Yeah. <laughs> Sacks of gold, man. Wow. It, well, I'm just saying that it's an industry standard, you know, is what has happened. It's not right, 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 it's right. Not guys getting together yeah, yeah. and trying to say screw you. It's guys that are, in their mind, trying to do the best for their company and the best for their pocket. But they're, but, but no, but you're right though. But they're taught they're that the best for their company is to screw you. Yes, and that that <laughs> I mean, that is a is a, a logical step to take. And something yeah. you have to shut yeah. off in a stockbroker. Right, don't get me wrong. I mean, look, I, Goldman Sachs, I think you can lay a lot of wrong and evil, frankly, at Goldman Sachs' feet, at mm -hmm. that company's feet. And I think that it has a, way too much influence. Uh, and in this administration, more than any other, right. uh, you have well, former Goldman Sachs. I'm in the cabinet. You know. Like, full on. Of course, then again, this cabinet, I don't know that they have any power. Because... True. You know, th th let's face it, this, the dope in chief is in charge. <laughs> well, I got no Steve Bannon's today. <laughs> well, I was noticing that, like, in, uh, yeah, in the Afghanistan speech, that's the first time I've ever heard Donald Trump in his whole lifetime say, I was wrong. In a way. He's in a way. I, I, interesting, I, you're right. I, and that I, I take wholly as the general's. I mean that is the generals beating out the Bannons and the and the the know nothings, but and I think we have to give them a, a, a high bit of praise at this point. 
because they're so they're giving they're wrong. keeping it together. Yeah, but I I think that I don't know though his his version of I was wrong was uh, I was wrong, but I'm really right. Yeah, and you that know is, that is Donald's way, which is as close as you're going to get with this guy. You're gonna I get. agree. Uh, that whole Afghanistan you know, speech. Well, I summed it up as uh, who knew war was hard, <laughs> right? <laughs> because yeah. basically, well, look. Afghanistan is, we're going on 16 years now in Afghanistan, uh, only a couple more years from now, and we will be sending people to Afghanistan who weren't even born when the war started. Okay, The longest war in U.S. history by far, mm-hmm. and uh, with no end in sight now. No end in sight. You know, if you're Donald Trump, and this is the thing where you just go, this guy is such a fucking idiot, because... The, the base of his party, the Bannon wing of the Trumpsters, they want nothing to do with Afghanistan or Iraq. They don't give a shit. Let all those people die is their attitude. It should be America first. That's the America first part of that party. Mm-hmm. He could have, in a certain way, you think about it, he could have explicitly uh, given something to his base by saying, I'm making the call. Afghanistan that we're pulling out, that we're done, and uh, we're leaving forthwith, like as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. We're done there. Sorry, yeah. we're out. Uh, and you know, he would have given this. It would have been like politically, it would have made sense for him, for him, to do that at this time, especially because think of how many people would have been like, you know, well, he's got the balls to finally do what Obama couldn't do, and and what you know Bush got us into, and Obama couldn't get us out of. He's got the balls to get us out of. Instead, what he does is he doubles down on the Obama policy. This is nothing. Sending 4,000 troops, it's not going to change a damn thing in Afghanistan. It's endless war that will never stop. So he appeases his generals at the, as a we, politically dumb move. Politically dumb. And frankly, I would almost see, even say, strategically, it's a dumb move. We've got to get the fuck out we're done with Afghanistan. It, we failed. I'm sorry if no one got the memo. We lost. Okay? We lost the war in Afghanistan. By the way, we lost in Iraq, too. We lost. No one wants to get that memo. That memo gets shredded before it gets to anyone's desk. All right? It's like Vietnam. I mean, it, it, who denies now that, oh, we didn't lose Vietnam. We wanted to fight for nine years and then leave. Yeah. And then have it... Go. Lots of people. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> so that's the point. The same people that would say, no, we won Vietnam. Uh, okay. Are the same ones that are like, we can win in Afghanistan. No, no, you can't. We already lost. The war's lost. So the notion of we're going to throw 4,000 troops into what? Prolong it into nothing. That was a, it was just a dumb, it just made no sense to me. None. And Eisenhower brought it up, was that the military industrial complex had conflicting interests and they were going to get us into many of these wars in the future. And Vietnam was the first one. And, and mm-hmm. in honor of every serviceman, this was not lost on the ground. This was lost by decision making. Yeah, this yeah, was yeah, lost yeah. by oh. policy. This was lost by asset allocation of where to put it and how to put it. This was not the ground soldier who came back from Vietnam and got spit on because of the the things that the politicians were telling the country at the time, you know, it wasn't their fault, oh, it's not our fault, you know, we're just having a hard time, the enemy's that good, it wasn't. The enemy is that good? You know, we were, you know, unexpected, and I think the same thing goes for Afghanistan, the same thing goes for Iraq, that these things were policy decisions that no one wanted to get their hands dirty in Congress Mm -hmm. to have it back up our troops right away. If we're going to war, this is our objective, this is what we're going for, as soon as we have it done, then we pull back to this stage. You know, and none of that. There is no plan ever for any of our wars anymore. When you, oh, no. War is an unending, it, and unending they love it. question of what are we there for, why are we there, it's all about terror that they can stoke up or, or turn down at any time, right. and it's just, it, it really is... War. A, what war. is it good for? Yeah. Huh. Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Anyway, making so, people rich. <laughs> okay, I was just doing a little. Oh, oh I was answering. <clears throat> sorry, a little ball confusion. All right. So, uh, 
Oh, I missed that one. Good God! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so with the uh, but the but the point about it, with with, it, blah, blah, with Afghanistan, right? The same issues that cause us to lose in Vietnam. Exactly your point. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with the military. It's just not the military no. and the leadership that made these shitty fucking decisions. Mm-hmm. Stupid, shitty, idiot decisions. They're the ones that then say, when you criticize the decisions, they say, oh, you don't believe in the hard-working men and women of the military? And you're like, no, I, I was talking about you. Absolutely. And they're like, no, 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 you're, you're a disgrace to the military. No, actually, I'm not. I'm actually honoring them by saying, you let's stop the doing... fuck up that you got them into. Yeah. <laughs> How's that killing sound? them. You know, and this, and this argument, which Trump put forward in his speech in Afghanistan, was that, that good people have died, fought and died there, therefore we can't leave. You know, I'm so, that, that's a, that's a specious argument that we have to get away from. And that's when people move out of neighborhoods. You know, I, I, yes, good people have fought and died in Afghanistan, and I'm sorry to tell you the truth. It was in vain. It was. It just was. Mm-hmm. Why people can't get what is right in fucking front of them? Of course, we look at our administration and we go, "Well, why would this be any different?" You know, there's a there's a there's a cocktail that's going on of you know, American exceptionalism, uh, the, the belief in that, and the uh, you know the, yeah, and unfortunately we take that all over the world to every but, negotiation. But again, this is where this is where Trump made no sense. No. Look, he, when what did he run on? Who did he criticize right at the beginning of his his campaign for the Bushes? Mm-hmm. He went after the Bushes for Afghanistan. That was one of the first. Moves he made as a candidate where people went, huh? Where what? He's criticizing another Republican? Bush? <gasps> that was like that was that was you know uh, that's heresy. You couldn't do that. And he was the first guy to do it, and it was successful. There were a lot of people that went, yeah, that was stupid. You know what the the Bush uh, you know policy was dumb, and they they bought. And so for him to sacrifice that now at a time when he could have, it would have taken. It wouldn't have. T- and here's the thing, and this is why it would have been perfect for Trump. It would have taken no political courage on his part whatsoever, because he doesn't have any. So that's why it would have been perfect. All right, but he, if he would have done that, he would have been appeasing his base and doing the right thing at the same time, and it would have just made sense. But this guy can't chew gum and walk at the same time. I think I, 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 that possibly, or the motivations are different. The motivation before was to beat Bush. Oh, you're done. Right. Time to change. Right. I can change my ideas now because it yeah, you're, you're, no. I have a new enemy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I it just, you know, and basically all he did was, in, as he's done time and time again, he just endorsed the Obama policy. Hmm? That's all he did was he endorsed the Obama policy. And here's the part where I want to say I will never again fall for Lindsey Graham being like, well, maybe Lindsey Graham's not so bad. Fuck you, Lindsey Graham. Yeah. Lindsey Graham tweeted out and said, well, finally... President, we finally have a president who's taking these militant Islamists seriously. Dot dot dot. Unlike Obama, I'm like fuck you. And I tweeted back to him and I said, "Here's a list of 25 terrorist leaders who died while President Obama was, you know, ignoring them." Yeah. Yeah. You know, too bad they can't speak back because they're dead. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it, did he tweet back with a dick? Oh yeah. <laughs> Because that's a that's a Lindsay, I think. Well, and the yeah. other thing is, is the the bombing list and the the target list, and nothing has changed in the theater of war, really, since Obama lost his red line. That's when he decided right. he had to step up and and do these targeted bombings. But that that list has not changed. It's they're going after the the same things as what people don't understand over there. Is it's it's not huge pockets of sixty thousand people. Right. You know. 1,500 men can take over a town of 100,000 as long as they're, you know, you know, crazy enough to go in there and start shooting people and kill everybody in sight. It, everybody else will flee, and then it's theirs. This hasn't changed since Vietnam. Now you go take them out. When Curtis LeMay, okay, who was the, the, the head general of Strategic Air Command, and he advised Lyndon Johnson, we can bomb the Vietnamese back to the Stone Age, and I forgot which one of Johnson's other advisors said, you know, they're pretty much already living in the Stone Age. Yeah. Okay, they're not far from it. Right. So, uh, you know, not literally, but most of the population is not living in, yeah. it's not an industrialized nation, so the notion that you're going to bomb them back to something that they are pretty close to anyway, and that somehow that's going to break their will, right. you're, you're just completely missing the point. Mm-hmm. Nothing has changed. 
there, there is no, there's very little infrastructure in a country like Afghanistan to begin with, and what there is is unsustainable. There's no, there's no national government. We keep thinking that these countries are like us. They're not. This goes back to just a complete lack of education, uh, you know, about how the rest of the world... I, I, look, I am not trying to at all excuse... And this is where you run into people like, oh, well, then obviously you love the Taliban and everything that... It, no, of course not. Those yeah. guys are douche canoes, and, and I don't, you know, the, the oppression of women and the way that they... Kind of funded them. But that's, you know. That was that. <laughs> right, right. So I'm just saying that it, it, this, this, this countervailing notion of, well, if you don't like my strategy, therefore you like the enemy. It's like, no. No, that's not mm-hmm. at all what I'm saying. Yeah. And for too long we've fallen for that. Right. And they just go with it. Obviously, you're you know, oh, obviously you're a commie lover. Back in Vietnam, it was if you said if you had a question about the war, uh, excuse me, Mr. President, I just mm-hmm. wondered why commie. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, no, not really. Uh, and it's the same now. Yeah. It, nothing's changed. <laughs> I don't know. Except it doesn't work on a lot of people anymore. Yeah, but it's working on a big bunch of them. You know, the ones that, the that, ones that, that make the patriotism. decisions. Well, that you know? big patriotism, you know, then, and that's the thing here is it doesn't take the majority anymore. It takes enough to get you elected, right? But you can lose that support, and as long as you got enough voice, you know, enough yeah, voices yelling. I think it's going to be interesting because we see like the the, the we see uh, Trump supporters come out, and then a vast number of people that are protesting that Boston. Boston, Phoenix, yeah, um, Phoenix. It was a, it's an incredibly conservative state. You know, he called for the you know the death of John McCain in mm-hmm. that speech, and John McCain sadly is beloved, you know, in Arizona. He, he's just he's the war hero. The vet, he, he not, won, not to that crowd. Well, not to his little teeny Trump crowd, but teeny Trump crowd. They can yeah. be led. They're 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 not there for a political thing. They're not making a political statement. They're there to rally, and it's like you go visit the Boy Scouts. We're going to cheer no matter what you say, because mm-hmm. you're in front of us talking, and we're here to cheer, and cheering's fun. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's it's not a political event. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a party. Yeah, well, that's the, like that's the sad, it's an ego. Pep rally. It's yeah. an ego boost it's for a, this guy. That's, it's an ego boost for him. It's a pep rally for the people that go. Um, that's, you know, all the, the, the Boy Scouts that cheered, you know, when they, when they booed Obama when they told him to. That's what they're doing. They we're doing what you say because we're rallying. It's our time. Mm-hmm. And that's what these people right. are doing, too. Right. And if they stop to think, which they probably won't. <laughs> there won't be any of that. Some may. Some may not. Uh, when they stop to think, they'll be like, oh, well, 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 why don't we just pull out of Afghanistan? Well, I, yeah, I mean, look, and that's there There are consequences to pulling out. Yeah. and I, and, and, and But at a certain point... You know, do the consequences of doing something like that do they outweigh the ongoing consequence of staying? I, I would argue that they've outweighed it for quite a long time, or that, that, that the consequences of staying, I should say, have outweighed the consequences of leaving right. for a long time. We, we, we're getting nothing. Look, we keep we 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 we're, the the parallels between Vietnam and Afghanistan are just fucking eerie because the whole point when we left. When we pulled out our combat troops out of South Vietnam in 1973, and Nixon was able to sign his peace deal with the North Vietnamese, it was that, well, it's because we finally got the South Vietnamese to stand up on their own and take the fight to the commies. And of course, you know, and we just poured money and equipment into this. And just like the Iraqi army did when ISIS first showed up, you know, in a a couple of, you know, Toyota trucks with, you know, guns on the back, and they've got tanks, and they're like, oh my god, and they just ran from their tanks. Our tanks. Mm-hmm. Our tanks, I might point out. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, motiv- a, 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 a small motivated force will get you so far when your other, the other side is, is it's just nothing but bluster. Mm-hmm. And there's no discipline, and there's no, uh, there's nothing to motivate them. It's the same in Afghanistan. We keep, oh, we're going to we're training the Afghanistan, the Afghanis to fight for themselves. No, that is isn't. That is an impossible task. There is no... First of all, it's a tribal region. Right. It's and, tribal. And not just a tribal, but a warring tribal. They it, have a it, war season. You, you know, it's it's kind of a, a, a ritual thing for them you're to, not, to all go to war with each other and take each other's resources every year. And know? what we don't understand, and here's the thing we don't understand, is you're right. They go to war, and then we where we, where we loot, we go, oh, yes, that tribe is going to go, and we don't like that tribe, so we'll go with this tribe. And then, we, then we're like, wait a minute, 
why are you trading with that other tribe? Right. I thought you're at war. Well, that was then. This is now. Right. Well, that's that. That's in the spring. This is the winter. Well, or that was for that. This is now. And this mm-hmm. is for this thing. We like. We go. I don't understand. Like, yeah, we you, we know you don't understand. We yeah. Yeah. That's why you can stay here and fight our wars for as long as you want. Sure. Because we're like the forty-year-old daughter that won't move out. Right. Well, and that's what we just. That's what we told. That's what we told the Afghanistan, the Afghani president, and that administration of. You're good. The money's going to keep flowing. Yeah. You have no reason to try and do anything, and they're yeah. not. And they won't. And well, there you go. There's not much that they can do. I mean, you know, you go back to this infrastructure thing again, and, you know, if the lake dries up over here, they have to go somewhere. And when they go somewhere, someone else is going to be upset that they're there. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it it's just a, it's a natural occurring thing that happens in places without a lot of infrastructure. Right. Because... The warlord is the guy with the money, and he's the guy with the job, so this season they might go work with him, but the next season that warlord isn't mad anymore. Well, and the other warlord is actually hiring this year, you well, know, and it's just, it's, it's a job for them. Right, and, and don't forget the complexity of the region. You know, you can't defeat the Taliban if you don't get the Pakistanis to defeat them also, but the Taliban is the Pakistanis... Uh, surrogate yeah. in Afghanistan. The Pakistanis are a nuclear state who are faced off against India, another nuclear state, and and that's a religious divide between yeah. Hindu and Muslim. And so Afghanistan is the barrier nation between these two countries. They use ISIS or not ISIS. They use the Taliban in in Afghanistan as their, like I said, their proxy. At the same time. Pakistan is incredibly helpful to us. At the same time, this is where we lo- Americans just lose, they don't get the shades yeah. of complexity. Like, we look at Pakistan, and they're, are you an enemy or are you a friend? You're this or you're that. And you're like, you know what? They're both. They're both an enemy and a friend. Yeah. We, we need Pakistan for all these different things. And at the same time, they are funding the people that are killing our soldiers. <laughs> they are providing them with intelligence. Well, uh, you know, uh, and on and on and on. But there's, it's such an incredibly complex region, and we're unwilling to deal in any kind of complexity. Mm-hmm. When we went over and decided we were going to protect the oil reserves, we effectively turned ourselves into another tribe in that system. You know, and, and unless we go in with an overwhelming force, this is the way it's going to be. Every single one of these wars in the Middle East is going to turn out this way, where it is kind of a stalemate because you know, with so much men, you can only go so far. I mean, Patton was There's amazing, the... and he only went like thirty miles. But you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but but Patton had an objective to get. I mean, that right. was that's a different nation state with right. an army and a, and a government, and a, th- th- that doesn't exist here. Right. I mean, and no one wants to understand that. That you're right. I mean that, and that that informs like Trump his whole thing on oh I've got a 30 day plan to defeat ISIS and oh we're going to show them in Afghanistan and again because he's an incredible moron he never really thought about like he he what like with health care he thought oh how hard can this be I'll just go in and, and say it'll be, I'll make a deal exactly I'll just cut a deal and you know or or. In the case of Afghanistan, of oh, we'll just go and we'll bomb. The, I'll take off all the restrictions and we'll just bomb them. They all see who's in charge until they sat down with the actual generals and they're like, actually, they won't do a fucking thing. No, that they're, actually, they're in mountains. That will actually yeah, <laughs> that will actually work against us. Um, you know that big ass bomb we threw on it did nothing. <laughs> so, so come up with something else. Yeah, the web. Oh, God, they you threw it at a mountain. Yeah. They threw it at him. Well, we killed the, the tw- tw- twenty-three terrorists or whatever, and you're like, uh-huh. you know, I was. It was interesting yeah, yeah. when I was researching how to respond to Lindsey Graham because I was so pissed off by his tweet, uh, and I, you know, I was looking at his various articles, and so I, I found something that listed out the twenty-five terrorist leaders, including one guy, I don't know, Osama bin Laden, whoever that guy is. Uh, that were killed by Obama, mm-hmm. uh, or not by Obama, but during his administration. He probably parachuted. You know, right? <laughs> so He could have had the joystick. You guys don't know. But investigating that, I, I came across some statistics that I thought were interesting. Uh, that in Afghanistan, we have claimed anywhere between thirty-three and 86,000 terrorists killed. This, again, goes back to Vietnam and body counts. Mm-hmm. And what we, we just go, oh, if they're dead, they're a terrorist. And you go, you know, those 
terrorists include children. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you are at a village and a bomb blows up and we killed the two guys that we were after and the 22 other people that were around them also die, guess what? We just killed 24 terrorists. And th this body count, that, and then we just we wonder, why don't they like us? Why don't they? And you know, well, because you killed them all. <laughs> and we, want, <laughs> so, and we, we yeah. have our American entitlement to go over and take their resources right. and bring them back to our place and, and use them up. Right. You know, and I don't know too many people that like that. You want to be safe. You want to, you know, here's what you do. I mean, and this is the way, and no one wants to uh, understand that this is how the world works. If When it comes to Afghanistan, I'm sorry, you're going to have to pay the Taliban. You have mm -hmm. to pay them. Mm -hmm. How much more cost effective would it be to just say, look, boys, how much do you, can we just, we'll put it in a Swiss bank account, whatever you need, but we'll pay you. You won't attack us. Yeah. We'll leave, and um, you know people are gonna have to fucking work it out. Oh, and it. and then we say we we need a year period to pull out, and everybody that wants to go with us. Right. And that's the part where it all gets tricky. Look, we've been there for sixteen years, just like in in Vietnam, where we basically when it was time to go, we're like. Well, see you later. Sorry, suckers. I guess you guys are on your own. And they, they got, you know, fucking crosshairs on them. Yeah. And we're like, oh, too bad to be. It sucks to be you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've all seen that iconic picture of the helicopter at the embassy in, in Vietnam and people hanging off the skids and shit because they knew what was going to come their way because mm -hmm. they helped the Americans. The Americans bugged out. Yeah. So, Our current South Korea. You know, to me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, yeah, no shit. So, you know, if you, you really want to, wanna, you know, pay, pay, pay the Taliban. They're going to rule the damn country one way or the other anyway. Why delay the inevitable? But give, but make the payment contingent on, we get a year to pull out, you don't attack us, and anyone who wants to go with us gets to come. And then the rest of you, I'm sorry, you're on your own. That's not much I can do. I can't yeah. fix the world. Well, anyone that gets to go with us won't pass muster here. Yeah. Well, yeah. We <laughs> Clearly... That's not going to happen. So let's, slight, let's take a slight... Please do. Slight right. No, a left. Either way. Okay. Everything. We'll, alt direction. We'll merge. We'll slight alt. Um, so, uh, Navy ships hitting each other. Yes. Who's Did, in charge? Yes. Well, not the Admiral of the Seventh <laughs> Fleet anymore. <laughs> no, not anymore there. Um, is this another case of you know, Trump ordering a boat to go one way and it goes the other? Well, there's some interesting facts that are coming out. First of all, I guess the, the latest accident involving the USS John, John McCain, McCain, not oh, named, McCain. by the way, for Arizona Senator John McCain, but for his father and mm -hmm. his grandfather, who were both Navy admirals. Um, I just heard a report earlier that they lost steering for 30 minutes before the collision. Mm. And that that is a similar report to uh, uh, no. the, the Fitzgerald, the ship that a couple months ago crashed. It also may have lost its uh, steering. And so you're like, what well, is the newer class? Yeah, I don't Both know. Both of them the, are the newer class. You know, what, what is. Probably all run by a computer. Dun, dun, dun. Hack. <coughs> Hack. Right, right. Russian uh, ships hanging out, out on our coast, learning how to get into our ships. Who knows? You know, I mean, anything can happen once you let the computer take control of these ships. They're huge. I mean, so, you know, they put in redundancies. It's really weird. To find that they could not steer the damn thing. Well, you know, they, put it on manual. Yeah, exactly. It's a big wood wheel. You know, so well, and, or well, or at least stop. Well, I mean, you would be able to okay, stop so an I, anchor. Yeah, someone needs to arrest. Steer. Well, there is okay. So I'm not saying that this is directly related, but I I posted an article that I saw, and this article was about 12 days ago. It was before the McCain accident, um, and I thought it was uh, highly interesting. Um, and it was it uh, it's uh, is Russia developing a GPS spoofing system? Yeah, so ships in the Black Sea may have been misdirected by a new cyber weapon, and basically he's talking about uh, this glitch that they can use on GPS. Mm -hmm. They can make ships uh, appear either where they aren't, or uh, just make them disappear altogether. And you know the ability to, and they were, they were talking about there was an incident in the Black Sea in which twenty Russian ships appeared on trackers to be in the same spot, right. all twenty miles inland. <laughs> okay, so uh, and it's and crazy basically now the worry is is that this is a cyber weapon and that the Russians have been testing this out, and it just makes you wonder why suddenly ships can't steer at the same time. If I can indulge my own conspiracy theories. <laughs> 
of uh, the same time that we have this very cozy Russian relationship now. Um, now, I, I'm not saying that these accidents are, you know, uh, sabotage, but something's fucked up. All right, me watching all these damn Senate hearings, have come to the conclusion that we are absolutely, positively underprepared for any type of cyber attack. <laughs> All of the guys, all of the directors yeah, right. are basically saying, we just keep our mouth shut and hope for the best. That's what I kind of get out of them. We don't tell you what we're doing. We don't tell you what they're doing. We see it. We can track it. We know what's going on. There's no way for us to, at this point, combat it. And if we do combat it, we don't know what the retaliation will be. So, if you get into that type of a scenario, which is why I want this Russian thing wide open. If there's Democrats that are dirty, I want them to fry. Just yeah. right with Trump. There are huge security gaps to our protection, which is what I think a lot of the Trump people want us to stop gap. You know, but I think they're going after the wrong people. The new war will be this cyber arena. It has been laid out. It is... The the only way not to have nuclear war among nations, you know, mm -hmm. big nations, um, and the big nations will continue preying on these smaller countries and stealing their resources and doing, and that will be the power battle, is who's going to be the head of the cyber war, you know, who's going to screw up enough shit to make your country doubt its own government and its own protection of its citizens. Looks like Russia. And Yeah, that's what everybody's saying. <laughs> Russia is way ahead. You got India coming. You got uh, uh, I think it's, it's North all our Korea tech coming. Goes through India. You know, they're, 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 yeah, they're, they got us beat. And they, you know, all of them say there, there really is no protection. The only protection is knowledge that they know it's, you know, it's happening and to, to tell the people. Yet we still are, are American, you know, attitude towards the world that we are the best and we can't tell anybody that we're not the best we could be working with Europe they've already handled this several times but we deny them you know we, we don't allow them in we don't we don't create a, a unified well, front in the new war and we have a president now who has created doubt and mistrust yeah. in these allies now if you are an intelligence agency in Germany or France right. you're the head of that you're like fuck I ain't sharing shit with you people. Right. I'm not sharing nothing. It and yep. Hell no. Until he's gone. You know? Well, I mean even after that. Yeah. You know, there's <sighs> still people there that didn't speak up against him. And how do you know they're not doing some other plot on their own, you know? So that's the whole thing about I want this to come to fruition. I am not a sore loser. I am not wanting Hillary Clinton to go into office. I want to know for the protection of my country, right. you know, and that right. anybody who says that I'm a, a loon for wanting this, I feel is unpatriotic. I mean, well, that's the true definition yeah. of it. No, and I, I, look, I, I said this before, and I, in total agreement with what you're saying, of if there's nothing there, fine. Right. Let's lay out the case and have someone like uh, Mueller or somebody else come forward and say, I looked into it, there really isn't shit to it, it really is just a bunch of fucking speculation. I, I, I can't imagine that that's going to be the case, but if somebody like that came forward and said, we looked, it really isn't there. We're done with it. But it needs to be laid out for us to see. The whole case. Mm -hmm. I think that sure. there was a... I think that if... And I understand in between a bit of a rock and a hard place, but I have to wonder if Obama isn't kind of kicking himself... That when he was still in charge, he didn't do more. He, I think he may, he and many others, which understandably made an assumption that responsible adults were going to replace them. Hillary. You know, no, even beyond that, even after the election. But that, yeah, well, Trump, okay, he's a he's a clown and he's a jerk, and I don't agree with any of his policies. But but surely they'll have some basic understanding of how some basic patriotism, some basic love of country that they won't. Go beyond this line. Oh no, I'm sorry. They don't. Okay, they yeah. They have no understanding. Well, I mean, Bill Moyer just had an investigator come up with the timeline. It's an interactive timeline. Allows you to drill down into each one of the stories. He started it right after his inaugurated. Had 26 points. Now he's got over 400. 
I mean, there's something to this story. Yeah. And every one of oh. the stories that you go into, you can drill down and go, that's crooked here. Well, why isn't anybody taking care of it? And I think that's what the big thing is now, is Mueller and his dream team of guys, who I love, are not in the press every day. Right. Um, at all. At all. <laughs> and they're just overwhelmed. I mean, they really, I think they they have such a big case that that small team can't really handle it, and that's why the slow pace of it all. And that is not appeasing Americans on either side. <laughs> you know, I don't... One side yeah. saying, oh, there's no proof. See, there's no proof. And the other side is like, well, yeah, look at all these things. And really, there is none so, but laid that, out yet, right. and we all need it. Well, that I goes back to, to Trump's stupid war with the intelligence agencies right from during the campaign and then right from the get-go of his presidency where he went out of his way to poke in the eye the leadership of the intelligence agencies who now of mo- I trust them more to get this done than I do the heads of the military uh, because a I think that I think that there's a lot of individuals there who understand what's at stake here they understand the threat that that Trump and his group represent, and especially the threat that Russia represents, mm-hmm. and, um, and and not that there aren't people in the military that understand that, but I just think they're too beholden to Trump. I think that by his going out of his way to antagonize the intelligence community, he, he that is biting him in the ass more than he'll ever know. Mm-hmm. It was just dumb. I'm glad he did it because I think that they are motivated to bring this guy down, right. not through fake. Not by faking anything, or no. I think that they're gonna they're gonna put this case together. So what I'm saying is, even if Mueller gets fired, you know, or even if somehow they're able to shut down that investigation, I, I think it's gonna come out one way or the other. Yeah, yeah I, but I is think it gonna it's gonna come out like Air America came out and nobody gets prosecuted. <laughs> you know, I mean that was a, a travesty to our our. You're talking about the CIA-run airline. Yeah, I mean, or what? Not the uh, liberal talk radio network, (laughs) (laughs) which is also a travesty. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, I mean, we've had many things that were just, you know, somebody should have went to jail over this shit, and nobody went to jail. Uh, is it going to get to there, or is it going to be this triumph over over evil? That would you would you if right now you could push a button, and Trump and his ilk would be out of the government but not prosecuted, or if you could make that deal, is that a deal that we would make? Well, I think that's what Trump is pushing for. I mean, don't you, don't you think But is that a deal that you play? would approve of? Yeah. Like right now. Yeah. Like right now. They leave. Yeah, there's been so many politicians know. that got got away with it. But, but no mean, prosecution. I, I, the whole administration. The whole deal. I give them all a pass if they got the F out. If they just and left I, us all I, I would, uh, I would and, probably and take that deal. Never, and they never come back. Yeah. I would take that deal. Can I add banishment <laughs> out of the country? <laughs> no. I mean, that would be... I mean, I would, I would consider them, if they took that deal, they are mm-hmm. now spies. I mean, they are now against the, the patriotic movement of you know the what? country. And they were they have to go live in North cars. Korea. <laughs> South Korea. Let's go put them on the line at South no, Korea. No, South Korea suffered enough. They're <laughs> our friends. Let's just put them in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I like that. And then and then we encourage the secession movement there. Oh, I'm always encouraging the secession <laughs> movement just, in just, Texas. Just go ahead. Please, just leave. <laughs> so. I always wondered about that. If they did succeed, would they go crying to Mexico if something <laughs> happened? Well, that, you know I mean? well, as we've said before, that is the only circumstance by which Mexico will be building a wall <laughs> and paying for it. Is if Texas is easy, like, oh fuck, we need a wall. We got this side. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so. There is a great hearing on the wall, by the way, out, out on C-SPAN. It's a congressional hearing, but they had some good witnesses there. And the surprising thing to me there was Obama and Biden. When they were both senators, they had approved and voted for um, 700 miles of um, double chain link fencing with barbed wire. Right. You know, like you'd see at a prison. Mm-hmm. Um, and at some point after 2008, they had $700 million allocated for it. It is still actually still allocated for the, the building of the said fence. Um, the guy at Homeland Security says, "Yeah, bring it on. I could. I'd love to have this fence on 700 miles of the. But we're not doing 2,500. That's just stupid. I'll take that extra money and take you know get other toys." 
Um, don't do it for all the whole thing. I mean, this is the guy on the line. Um, but it was the uh, one uh, amendment by a Republican senator, and it was a must-do. Um, the director of Homeland Security had final say on what type of wall was in place. And that just stopped the whole thing. For whatever reason, she was the final say. It was a girl, I think. Was it Napolitano? Well, yeah. It probably was. Yeah, she was the final say, and nothing would get past her. So that was the whole reason. We would have it already with Obama. We would have our 700 miles of fencing that we need. Right. And That's I can deal with. Well, and, you know, the, the guy at Homeland Security does say that fencing is, is, is not ideal it would be great if we could come up with this wall but we realize that that is cost prohibitive yeah. it, I, with a fence i can take my manpower from uh, one man per one mile and turn it into five miles you know one man per five miles with a fence we know they're going to come out there with a blowtorch but we're ready for that that's the and we know they're going to try and do something with a wall it's just going to take them longer to breach right. it and we might catch it. So we would like the wall, but we realize that's cost prohibitive, and we would take that extra money that you guys would give us um, and place it on sensors, or place it on more drones, or place it on more men. Or, for it. You know, and that's uh, what everybody there, all, even the people that had tragedy. I mean, there were some witnesses there that had tragic things happen to them by illegal aliens. They live down in that area, they, they, they fear for their life, they fear for their animals, they fear for their ranch, they feel fear. They're just in fear, and I, I, you got to feel for them. I mean, they, they're Americans, they're, they're part of our, our culture too. But even they say, a fence isn't going to do it, a wall isn't going right. to do it. We need the whole kit and caboodle. We need more men, we need more sensors, we you, need more you, planes. You, we need, you, you know, need a comprehensive immigration policy. Right. And the, the biggest weapon you could bring to bear on this problem is having mm -hmm. a, a coherent <clears throat> policy. Right. And you need to have uh, 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 laws in place for employers. Right. Right. That well, is, you know, they're, they're, they're the ones getting off scot-free right now. And I don't really think that anybody right. on the left is arguing against securing our border. Do no. you think anybody arguing that says that our border isn't no, Un it, that isn't secure. You know, I, I, I think everybody understands that there's a lot of people that could come across. You know what? One organization to kind of we'd like to stop to, to take up on what David just said. I think one organization that has been consistently they don't they don't advocate against border security, but they they don't like the crackdowns, and that's the U.S. Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. is very uh, always very. Uh, Vocal at the right time for the certain thing. I'm like, it's, it's, now let's not get nuts here with the cracking down on the business people. Mm -hmm. The cracking yeah. of the business. Yeah, you know. <laughs> now, 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 hold on, hold on. You know, we, and look, we've seen in the last couple of weeks the reports about uh, produce laying in the fields in oh, yeah. California and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Here in Michigan, there's a you know a migrant uh, community that comes in uh, during the seasons and picks blueberries and and other crops uh, across the state here and. Uh, you know, it, again, who could have foreseen this? Well, everybody. Yeah, right. you know? pretty much everyone that was talking you about know, it. Right? And then here we are, you know, and uh, I don't know. It just, again, it defies all logic. All I get out of that guy is, uh, uh, immigration's hard, who knew? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> well, I was saying that to Colleen today, my wife, uh, it, it's really almost pointless to listen to him anymore. Yeah. You know, everything I, that comes out of his mouth is either given to him from somebody else or is just complete bullshit. I have tried. You know? I have tried. You know, when people, when Obama was president, and I, and I, and, and Republican friends or people that I knew that they would say things like, "I can't even stand the sound of his voice," or you'd say, "Hey, did you see the state?" Oh, I ain't gonna watch that fucker. And you'd be like, "Wow." And I'm like, "Well, I'm not gonna, even though I disagree, and I'm gonna, fi I'm not gonna be that way." Now I'm like, "I can't stand that fucker's voice." I, I'm not, you know, and I and, and I don't literally. I'm not. I, I do care what he says. And I do absorb it, but I, I can't stand that fucker's voice. I would much rather read it. I think it's yeah. actually fun to try and uh, read his speeches. His, his sentence <laughs> structure is hilarious. Um, you get more out of it. You can kind of you can 
And, right. The, and, the and, nuance that Trump wants you to and, get and, out and of you this. Don't have, <laughs> and you don't have to read it like a fourth grader like he does. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, you can read it how, at your You can read it in Darth Vader's <laughs> voice. Well, <laughs> right. well, that's why, like, when he gave his speech about Afghanistan, and everyone was, you know, oh, he's so presidential. Which they keep doing, and yeah. you're like, "Wait, well, are you people Our bar is fucking really low right now. dumb?" Yeah. And I saw this. Open. I saw this tweet, and I laughed out loud, and I had to share it, which I thought it <laughs> just said it perfectly. Guy tweeted, he goes, "Too many in the media," and he printed, he t- he t- put this out the night of the speech. He goes, "Too many in the media tonight." Quote. Daddy came home sober last night and didn't yell or hit me. I think everything is all better now. Yeah. And that's generally how people are, where they're like, he, he that's this attitude of like, for wow. oh, well, for a second he appeared to be a president. Yeah, but all those other seconds that he wasn't, <laughs> you know, you're just forgetting all that. Poof, it's all gone. Wow, John, that's pretty crazy. I've heard of like psychologists and psychiatrists are like at an all time high right now, and people are all upset. I mean, will we really have to have like a Trump Al Anon when these <laughs> were all done? You know? Well, are we being abused? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, are we like abused children? children? I mean, I don't want to detract from that as a as a real problem, but I'm just saying. Well, I mean, Do it we, doesn't have to be children either. You can just, think of like yeah. spouses and things, like you know, that will take that verbal abuse for so many years. I'm burning bedum. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no I'll get you to uh, okay. have to give up your Congress yeah. seat, <laughs> so, so, your right. Senate seat. That's, uh, that's, that's no problem. Uh, I'll, I'll pull the old fair faucet of burning bedroom oh down. Oh God, <laughs> his no. hair will go up like crazy. Oh. It's all nylon anyway. It's his. Nice. He'll, he'll pull on it. To tell you. No, I. I wish our president only uh, good health so that he can spend it inside a prison cell. I know that's a dream, and I know it's probably really never going to happen. I get it. But like buying a ticket for Powerball, when you you pay the money and you've got that 24-hour period where you can dream. I can dream. Yeah, I know that at the end of the 24 hours, you're not going to win. And I get it. Secret service in prison? (laughs) That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what the thing Obama's is, is he, he won't go to pr- he won't go prison. to prison. Well, he, he won't go to prison yeah, unless he's impeached. It's part he, of the gig. There's a there's a solid body of law that says you can't charge a president while he's in office. There is a solid body of law. I don't agree with it, I but there's a there is they, a. I thought someone just debunked all that. That was a whole thing about we thought that if we actually charge Nixon. That we would send the country into turmoil, and now that we've had all this other bullshit, it's come up. I, look, Clinton brought it up during his impeachment thing. They, 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 they dusted yeah. off the Nixon stuff. We're like, oh, you can't charge a sitting president, you see, because well, I'm sure, and, you I'm know, sure he'll see right, right. Well, well, look, when you know your back's against the wall, you're you're gonna yeah. find whatever defense you can. Uh, but I'm just saying that there is. A, I'm not saying it's like the law of the land, so to mm-hmm. speak. But it it is not yeah. a fringe element. That makes the case you can't charge a sitting president. In other words, he would only become legally vulnerable once he's impeached. Right. And that the political process has to work itself out. I think it's an interesting thing. We could have a whole other show on that, which you know we're not going to, but talking about How about next time. That, that's that 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 is actually a good thing. That yeah. that that the political process, in other words, the political process got you into this mess. It's going to have to get you out of this mess. And that you don't want the legal machinery interfering. Because all Mueller probably won't or could not indict Trump. Okay? I think he can only recommend. He can recommend, but no one's going to... I don't think anyone... I just don't see it happening. He can indict the entire... What it is supposed to do is, is it is supposed to inform the political apparatus... To take care of this problem, right. and then, i.e., impeach this guy. Okay, uh, you know, when Nixon, you know, there was the point where because Nixon was never charged, and of course he got uh, pardoned by Ford. But even while, even before he resigned his office, uh, the the thing that made him resign was that the Watergate prosecutors threatened him. Uh, not publicly, but behind the scenes, they said, "We're going to indict you. We're going to indict you." Um, or we're going to name you, I'm sorry, name you as an unindicted co-conspiracy, uh, co-conspirator. Think about what that means. I'm going to name you as an unindicted co-conspirator. Even they acknowledge they probably couldn't charge him. So mm-hmm. they're not going to indict him. You're unindicted. 
but we're going to name you as a co-conspirator. In other words, we're going to get this political machinery moving mm-hmm. to get you out. We will disgrace you publicly even more than you ended up being disgraced. Right. So I think that that still applies now. I don't know that they'll... When I see people with these fantasies, and that's what they are... You know, they, they use their Photoshop for pictures of him in an orange jumpsuit. And, you know, <laughs> like, it ain't going to happen. I orange is the new orange. You know, it, it just isn't going to. Billionaires don't go to prison. Well, I, they just don't. Um, Bernie Madoff. You know, um, no, he lost all of it. Well, he lost his money. <laughs> he, he if he still it. had his money, he would not be in prison. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're, yeah. running, we're, we're running close on time. A couple of final thoughts, things. Uh, get your, co- your ideas on the uh, McConnell Trump war. Mmm. And we didn't even talk about the loss of Bannon. We can do that next time. Right. Well, and, and, spe- and just real quick, I thought it was interesting that Mitch McConnell himself said uh, he doesn't believe that most news is fake news. I don't know if you heard those comments. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, when Mitch McConnell's the voice of reason, how mm-hmm. far have we fucking fallen? Uh, but he said, he goes, oh, he goes, I, I think most news is, is factual, pretty factual, because I, I like a variety of sources. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm agreeing with this man. Uh, so, it doesn't take much. Like I said, the ball is yeah. the bar is so low now. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. admitting that some yeah. journalism is good. <laughs> yeah, okay. Think, oh, <laughs> I mean, think of how many Democrats there are on Lindsey uh, Lindsey Graham and McCain side now. You know, I mean, yeah, they're they're just hoping and praying that these two people live. Will, will live long enough to do something. And you know, a year ago we hated their guts. I mean, both of them. They were unreasonable both, you know, a year ago. Now they're seeing ridiculousness. But the, this McConnell-Trump war is getting yeah. bad. It's a violent, uh, profanity-laced phone calls. Right, supposedly. Supposedly. Uh, yes. so we'll see. Well, all right, so here's the deal. This is our 99th episode. 99. Ta-da. All right. Red we're, balloons. We're, we're, you're going to be gone next week. I am. So we're going to take next week off. Whoa, see? All right. And then when no we come back in two anthem. weeks, that'll be our 100th episode. <laughs> And we'll have a hundredth episode extravaganza. We'll have a centennial. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, yes, we'll live it up. Hopefully, we'll have a present from the president. I'm resigning. Wow, oh, maybe he is a listener. Did you get your Powerball ticket? No. <laughs> you know what happens? Like last week, we recorded. You weren't here. You didn't know. But we recorded a day late. Even though the world waited for us to record for Bannon to get I know, I saw. I did think that too. (laughs) So what's happening tomorrow? Oh my God, you're right. What is going to go down tomorrow? Well, that's the shell shock we all live in now here in America. It's not even shell shock anymore. We don't even know what's going to happen. Standard operating douchebaggery. (laughs) All right, so stay tuned. Two weeks from now, the 100th episode. The Centennial. The no cry zone centennial. Maybe we'll have like uh, we'll we'll do one of those uh, episodes like where they they you know we'll have like bits from past shows. And we could do that. We could do like this is your life, Rob Vidro. You know, maybe maybe past guests if they would just, like to join us. We'll just cry. Can we all wear white shirts and khakis? Yeah. I have, you know I have some tiki torches. That's in how them. I blend in around here. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and at a moment's notice, I will rip that white polo off and, and signal my defeat too. Yep. Like most of the, uh, I was just along for the ride, Nazis. Uh, yeah. Did you? Oh, you saw that video of the kid. <laughs> I just was just trying to have fun. I was just That's checking it out. Sean was some fun to do, and I had one of these left over from my um, my my choir. So yeah. I wore. I didn't. I, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not a racist. Don't hurt me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, there you go. There you go. How there do we? Are. How do we wrap this up? Uh, well, you don't, because you're a dirty alt Jew oh. dreidel truther. So Rob and I, like last week, we'll wrap it up by saying we don't need John. He will not replace us. <laughs> John will not replace, replace us. us. John, John will, will not replace, replace us. us. <laughs> no. I'm in charge. Showing you my... I'll let, this mic- let these microphones roll. Yeah. Damn, I've got to think of a new chance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't have Lobster that. roll and soil. <laughs> Lobster roll and soil. <laughs>
Find the No Cry Zone on Facebook and tweet at No Cry Zone. Email nocryzonepodcast at gmail.com. And for more podcasts, comics, books, movies, and more, head to abnormalentertainment.com. You've been listening to the Abnormal Entertainment Network.